Hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, today we are gonna go over some uh, configuration of 802.1x and we're gonna utilize PIP, IPTLS um, to do the authentication uh, and let's jump into it right away. We have a lot to do. So I created this small you know, uh, network diagram for you guys to hopefully be able to understand better. Uh, we have our a supplicant, a small laptop, we have a layer through switch doing some switching and we have uh, our VMs on a server, uh, this server is running a AD, uh, Active Directory and a CA uh, for the Certificate Authority and we also have a, a Cisco ICE a VM running on our uh, a network. So we're gonna jump right into it. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to this guy. We're gonna remote into our domain controller. So if we go to uh, our group policy management, and you know, this is assuming that you already have a domain controller in place, uh, the certificate authority which we're gonna jump into it in a few minutes is already you know uh, joined to the domain things like that right the basic stuff and we are gonna play with the default domain policy but obviously in, in your environment a production environment this might not be the best idea you might have different uh, policies uh, created and you should create a new policy for these things and probably not put it on the default domain policy but we're gonna do this and we're gonna go to edit and if I remember correctly I already configured it but I'm gonna walk you guys through what you need to do so basically in the domain a controller you want to uh, configure so that the endpoints or the supplicants or uh, things like uh, even the servers if you want the servers to uh, enroll uh, in the certificate authority so that they can go in and get their certificate from the certificate authority so i'm gonna go to policies i'm gonna go to windows settings and i'm gonna go to security settings and under security settings so you have public key policies and if you see you look down here under auto enrollment yeah, it's enabled already. So normally it will be disabled. So you have to just enable it and then check mark uh, the settings depending on your on your preference. Adjust the percentage depending on your preference and then click OK. So basically right now is allowing the on the computer configuration to auto enroll to have uh, them uh, through GPO to, to set the settings, right? And now we're gonna do the same thing for users. So Windows settings, Windows security, security settings, and then public key policies, and the same thing. On the auto enrollment, you enable this uh, GPO and click OK. So again, this is just telling the whole domain to auto enroll into this uh, certificate services. And, and the domain controller doesn't have a CA yet because we haven't uh, we haven't done that yet. We haven't uh, configured the uh, certificate authority, but we are about to do it right now. So on the domain controller, this is basically all you need to do. Uh, uh, obviously, if you want to uh, create a 802.1x supplicant uh, policy, you can do it through GPO, but I'm gonna do it directly in the uh, laptop later on so that you can see uh, more in detail how, how it's done. <clears throat> I'm gonna minimize the domain controller and I'm gonna remote into my certificate authority. Again, this is a Windows uh, server acting as the uh, certificate authority or is gonna act as the certificate authority. I haven't configured it yet. All I did on this server right now is join it to the domain. It's joined to the domain, that's all we have. All right, once uh, um, server boots, uh, the first thing we wanna do to uh, make it the certificate authority, we want to add the role 
and features. So we're gonna do that real quick. Assuming that you're very familiar with this stuff, uh, all you have to do is Active Directory Certificate Services, add the features, click next, next, next. And then here, this is very important. You want to add the roles of certificate enrollment policy web services. You want to add the certificate enrollment web service and the certification authority web enrollment. And you'll see later on why. So we're going to do that. We're going to restart the, the server if necessary. <clears throat> and we're going to install. This is going to take a few minutes and we'll be back. All right. Once uh, the configuration uh, finish, we're going to uh, click on the link to configure the roles. And here is uh, going to ask you to uh, specify some credentials. Obviously, on your environment, might differ. Uh, you might want to use different uh, a service account or something. It's up to you. But for here, we're just going to use my account. I'm going to click next. And the first thing that we're going to configure is the certification authority. And we're going to configure the certification authority web enrollment. The reason I'm going to, I'm not going to click on all four is because these two roles need uh, things from these two roles to work. So we're gonna this we're gonna configure these two first and then we're gonna go to these two. So let's let's click next. We're gonna do an enterprise CA, a root CA, and we're gonna create a new private key. And uh, these uh, settings are okay. These settings are okay. Uh, five years is fine. Uh, settings are okay and we're gonna configure <clears throat> basically what it's doing is uh, configuring the key and uh, all those good stuff now do you want to configure additional role services yes because we have two more and we're gonna say certificate enrollment web services and the certificate enrollment policy web service we're gonna utilize the CA name which is the one that we use ha uh, this CA right now we're gonna do Windows integ integrated authentication, that's fine. And then we're gonna specify an account. Again, the account on your environment. You might want to do a service account or something. It's up to you, depending on your needs. We're gonna click next. We're gonna Windows int integrated authentication also for the CEP. And we're gonna configure. right it's all good now we're gonna close and everything is fine now if we go to a uh, certification authority we can see that we have the role now here it's working there is no issue certificates no revolt no pending no nothing now <clears throat> on the certificate templates this is some uh, configuration that we need to do is on their certificate templates so as you can see, we have already some different uh, certificate templates that the CA is already using to, uh, you know, to give to the different uh, endpoints or domain controllers, servers, or whatever. We're gonna create new ones. We're gonna create two certificate templates that we're gonna use to give for uh, authentication. All right, so we're gonna right click and say manage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the user um, certificate template and I'm going to duplicate it. Now here I'm going to leave this as is under general. I'm going to name a GPO user and this is a, a user template that we're going to use to authenticate under uh, 802.1x. Uh, we're going to let's say not allow the private key to be exported this is all good under security remember this is for users right so we want to make sure that the domain users are allowed read write enroll and auto enroll a domain admin same thing and if you have any other group that are users like enterprise admins is under domain and domain admins is fine it depends on your environment right so whoever group you need to auto enroll on this using this certificate you want to make sure that to add it on here 
but for now this should be okay uh, and I click apply let's see extensions under extensions on application policies you want to make sure that you add the server art authentication all right this is the things that the uh, the certificate is allowed to do uh, different application policies it's, it's allowed to be utilized for these different things and uh, see subject name this is very important uh, because in my environment right is a, a lab environment i don't have emails on the user so if you say include email it's not gonna work because it's not gonna find an email so i'm just gonna uncheck this and i'm only just gonna use the user principal name so when the user comes to enroll into the certificate it's only gonna use this if i try using the email it's not gonna match because there is no emails on the user account so it's not gonna work so i'm gonna leave it like that and that should be it i'm gonna apply and okay and now we have a new template right there I'm gonna do the same thing for workstation authentication. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna call it GPO works workstation. And I'm gonna do this. Not allow the private key to be exported. Security and now for the workstation we actually I'm gonna call it where is it? Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna call it uh, computers. GPO computers, right? Because the domain controllers are also gonna use this uh, template. Not only the computers, not only the workstations. So let's see. Security. I'm gonna allow domain computers to read, write, enroll, enroll, and auto enroll. And I'm gonna add the domain uh, controllers. To do the same thing and domain controllers read write enroll and other enroll and if you can see domain admins cannot enroll domain users cannot do anything to it because we don't want them to use this um, template we want them to use the the user template all right on the extension we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna add the server authentication uh, server authentication okay subject name the same thing uh, if you do email it's not gonna work because the computers don't really have an email attached to it uh, so we're just gonna utilize the DNS name all right and I believe that should be it now we have the templates created if we close this and we go to certificate templates you can see that they are not in there so we're gonna add them so that they are available to be utilized so we're gonna add new certificate template to use and we're gonna add those two and as you can see now they are there they are uh, available to be utilized right so for example issue issue certificate there is none in there. If I go to my uh, domain controller, if I do a command prompt and I do GP update force, we should be able to see the domain controller enrolling in getting a certificate. So let's go back to the CA. And refresh this and we can see that look at that beautiful thing y we see that the domain controller got four different uh, certificates he got one for email replication he got one for domain controller authentication he, he got one for Kerberos authentication and he got the one that we uh, configure the GPO computers one Right, and we have one here for GPO user. That's the user that is logged in on the domain controller right now. If I do the same thing here uh, on the CA, on the certificate authority server, we should see as well that it's gonna get its own uh, certificate. 
let's see if that works refresh and look at that the CA got a GPO computer and since I am logged in with my account on the CA server I also got a certificate users look at that so it's working it's uh, uh, working as it should right now right so we have so far uh, the server admin uh, I mean um, active directory is uh, configured to uh, with a GPO to do the auto enrollment and we also have the certificate authority server configured to uh, give certificates to the computers and to the users uh, so that they can later on uh, utilize those certificates to uh, authenticate obviously the servers are not, not going to use the certificates to authenticate uh, but the computers will and the users will to uh, to authenticate with the eyes so the next thing that we're gonna do uh, we're gonna go to the switch and we're gonna do some configurations on the switch so that the switch can communicate with the server with the cisco eyes and can uh, you know conduct all the authentication uh, traffic we are on the switch we have to uh, configure different things that so that the switch can uh, communicate with the eyes and can conduct all the authenticator uh, traffic uh, I have all the commands here already and the switch have the commands in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through it explain certain things and then <clears throat> move forward so basically the first thing you want to do on the switch is create a, 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 a new model right uh, that is gonna uh, enable the triple a uh, process in the in the switch uh, once you do that uh, we are gonna create a server a AAA group server radios and this is creating a new group of server that is called radios uh, that is for radios and it's called radios eyes right i named it that you can name it whatever you want right yeah uh, but that's what i named mine and then once you do that it's gonna ask you to specify the server ip the authentication port and the account import uh, and by default it utilize 1812 and 1813 and it is not a uh, mandatory but it's a good idea to specify the source interface for the uh, radius uh, traffic which in my case is VLAN 10 uh, but whatever VLAN the radius uh, tra uh, server in this case the ICE is on uh, is most likely the source interface that it, you're gonna be or you want to specify on here so I'm gonna do those uh, commands real quick so that you can see uh, if I do uh, this guy it's gonna prompt me to a different uh, right is uh, on a different prompt and then that's where you specify uh, the other commands you can do a uh, question mark and things like that to walk you through it but it's a pretty simple uh, configuration once you do that you want to uh, specify the different authentication uh, <coughs> methods so for example authentication login default it's local that's fine the ones that you need to worry about is this one uh, <clears throat> authentication for dot one x we're gonna use the group radio radius size which is this guy so every time there is a dot one x authentication it's gonna use this same thing for authorization on the network uh, we're gonna use radius size and local but radius size first which is this guy and then also for accounting you want to update new info or you can do update uh, periodic uh, it's, it's up to you depending on your needs and um, also for accounting dot one x and the star stop group is radius eyes which is this guy and accounting network start uh, stop group is uh, also this guy those are pretty straightforward commands but those are commands that you need for the switch to know how to handle 
those uh, uh, that kind of traffic and uh, then you want to this command right here is for the change of authorization or coa so you want to make sure that uh, i'm gonna do that command right here let me copy it Once you do that, uh, you're telling the, the switch uh, that uh, the radio's dynamic outer, uh, outer uh, and then which is uh, you know for its change of authorization, and then you want to specify uh, the server, right? So it will be client. The client is the server, and you can do either host name or the IP address. In my case, I use the IP address, and then you want to do the server key and you want to specify the server key which is the same server key uh, that uh, we utilize for the uh, radius secret which we haven't configured that on the on the server and the ice yet but we will at some point and i'll show you all right that's that uh, let's see the next uh, configuration that we need to do is uh, the attributes so uh, we have different attributes that we need to specify uh, uh, for example in attribute number a to and there's a command uh, to include in access request no uh, 25 to access request include and then we can specify a, a radio server uh, with the key and we can uh, radio server. No, this one we don't need that because we already have it here. And then this is very important. These two uh, commands. Uh, so these two commands specify the switch how uh, right to send the accounting out and authentication uh, traffic to this radio server, right? Without those uh, VSA commands is not gonna communicate correctly to the radio server so you want to make sure that you uh, add those commands let's see what else this is the <coughs> configuration for the uh, interface so let's say right now my my endpoint on my laptop is uh, connected to the f3018 so if i do a show run in interface f3018 i can see that all i have is a switch port access vlan 100 and it's an access uh, switch port so the different commands that we need to uh, configure on that interface so that it conducts 802.1x are in here so for example uh, authentication open is utilized mostly when you are doing like a, a you know transparent mode where you are uh, just looking at the traffic to make sure that it's working things like that uh, but authentication open mostly goes with uh, a access list that you configure on the interface of the of the switch and that interface and that access list is replaced by the access list that is going to be downloaded from the radio from the eyes once it is authenticated so for example i can create a access list let's see IP access extended and i'm gonna call it a authentication open right and now i'm gonna say ip uh, permit ip any, any so obviously in a uh, you know production environment you don't want to do something like that but you know, this is just for uh, you know uh, demonstration purposes so now that i created that i can uh, add that access list to the to the interface configuration once I do that. So let, let's let's go back to the interface and let's configure that. So I'm gonna say 
authentication open. I'm gonna shut it first, just in case. And then IP access group. And it's gonna ask me for the name of the access list. And I called it out open. I believe that's what I called it. Let's see, auth open, okay, auth open. Okay, uh, oh, in. So that the traffic that is coming into the uh, interface is, uh, is hitting that ACL. Then after that, we're gonna say authentication order. So I want the authentication order to be map first and then dot on X. The reason I do that is uh, uh, so that if you have uh, wireless or if you have a uh, not wireless, uh, if you have like a printer or something that is uh, connecting to that interface at some point, it can authenticate. And once the map times out, then it's gonna use the dot one x. I'm gonna say priority is dot one x and then map authentication port control is auto authentication periodic. So uh, that uh, let's see, yep. And then map you need the map uh, command there to enable the map uh, the dot one x. PAE authenticator that's just telling the switch port that he is acting as an authenticator uh, and then for a uh, last time uh, we want the dot one x timeout to be 10 seconds so I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna do a do show run interface and as we can see we have all the commands that we need it's shut down that's fine i'm gonna do another shot and now that interface is uh, configured to uh, conduct 802.1x and map as well all right so that is pretty much it for the for the switch uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward uh, Basically, it boils down to uh, pointing the the switch to the right uh, server to the uh, ICE in this case. We want to create the AAA new model and tell uh, how to handle different traffic when it comes to authentication. We want to uh, configure the change of authorization. We want to configure the attributes and VSA commands and then configure the interface in this case is only one but obviously if you have more interfaces that are going to be utilizing 802.1x then you need to configure that in all the interfaces all right so now we are going to go to the fun stuff uh, so we can see we already configured this part we configure this part uh, we are going to jump into the eyes now to configure the things that we need to configure in eyes so let's jump into it right away. Uh, I have the ice right here. Uh, it's pretty much a, a new a, a deployment. I The only thing that I have done so far is to join it to the domain. Uh, pretty easy uh, stuff to join it to the domain, but I'm just gonna go uh, into the tab here uh, so that you guys can see that it's joining into the domain right here <clears throat> a very important thing that you want to do when you join it to the domain is to go to the groups tab and you want to make sure that you add the groups that you're gonna need uh, to create the authentication or authorization policies uh, in my case right in the, this environment uh, we're gonna utilize domain admin domain computers and domain users to build some authorization policies but if you need other groups from uh, active directory here is the place that you uh, add those groups right so once you do that uh, the next thing that you want to do another external identity source that you want to uh, add to the ice is the certificate authority right 
So if I go to certification authentication profile uh, and I add a new one, I'm gonna call it uh, it's easy uh, certs and underscore right and you can add a description if you want and then you have to de uh, specify the identity store which in this case is our dom uh, active directory domain right this is the r domain so when you create when you join the the active directory i called it this right you can call it whatever you want so when you come in here and you add that then that's the way it's gonna appear on here right so the the certificate authority is gonna be pulled from this domain whatever certificate authority you have configured on this domain is gonna be the one utilized for that so I'm gonna call it CC underscore certs you can use identity from and you can you know select different attributes here I, I'm just gonna say any subject or alternative name attribute doesn't matter and then you can uh, specify like match uh, client certificate against certificate in identity store you can do always perform a binary comparison it depends on your need we're gonna say never for now and we're gonna uh, submit once you do that uh, that is pretty much the uh, identity sources that you need to add to the eyes uh, another thing that you need to do is to add the uh, network device in our case is already uh, added but I'm gonna delete it just so that you guys can see uh, delete selected so if I have right I have my switch here which name is a uh, switch 001 so I want to add that switch this guy into the network devices on their eyes right uh, in your environment a production environment you might have to add uh, dozens of them right hundreds it depends how big it is so I'm gonna add it add it I'm gonna paste the name and I'm gonna add the IP address of the device very important this IP address you want it to be to be the IP address of the VLAN that is gonna be utilizing uh, that is gonna be sending traffic to the eyes to the eyes right so the eyes if I go here the eyes IP address is 192.168.10.1 so it's on the 10 network and since it's on the 10 network if I do a show IP interface brief you can see that uh, VLAN 10 is on the 10 network so I want to add this IP address as the IP address of the network device because it's gonna be sending the traffic using this IP address so that way you can identify that network device <clears throat> and all these can be a default a very important the location uh, you can uh, right if you have like hundreds dozens of devices you can divide them by different locations I created a location called bedroom is the only device I have so I'm just gonna leave it there uh, IP sec I'm gonna leave that as is and the device type I'm gonna leave that as is uh, the radios tab is very important to enable it and then here you want to do the share secret right <clears throat> If you want to use a second share secret, you can do that, but that doesn't, uh, it's not necessary. The COA port, I'm gonna uh, leave a default, which is 1700. I'm not gonna touch the DTLS or any of this stuff. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna submit. So now that is added to the database in the uh, ICE, that uh, device is added. So we're gonna go next. We're gonna go to the policy elements, but for the policy elements, there is a couple of things that we need to do. We want to go to the results tab, and this is the place that we want to be. So this is our things that we're gonna uh, utilize when we build the authorization profile, uh, authorization uh, and uh, authentication policy sets, right? 
So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, under authentication, allow protocols. There is a default network access already built in there, allowing a bunch of stuff uh, that we might not want to allow uh, for EAP TLS authentication. So I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna call it EAP uh, TLS. You can call it whatever you want, but the point is that we want to allow only the protocols that are needed for EAP TLS authentication, like allow EAP TLS. I'm gonna allow PIP, and for the inner method, I'm gonna allow MS Chat version two, and I'm also gonna allow EAP TLS, which is the one that we're gonna be using today. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not gonna allow EAP fast because we're not gonna need it. I'm not gonna allow EAP TTLS, and that's good. Uh, again, this is something that is back practice to only allow the things that you need. Uh, that way you are less vulnerable to different attacks, right? So uh, once that is done, I'm going to go to the authorization uh, tab. And the first thing I'm going to do, this is kind of backward, honestly. They should put this on top. But anyway, we're going to go to downloadable ACLs and we're going to create new DACOs so that they can be downloaded into the switch once the aut authorization process is completed right so i'm gonna create one for domain admins right so this is the daco that is gonna download and uh, that is gonna be downloaded to the switch port when a domain admin is authenticated and since it's a domain admin i'm gonna allow ip any any right I want my admins to have uh, access to the entire network. I'm going to do the same thing for the domain users. But for the domain users, I don't want them to have access to my internal network, right? For example, so I'm going to do a uh, uh, deny IP any. I'm going to deny access to my internal network, which is a uh, 192.168 network i'm gonna deny that and then i'm gonna permit ip any, any. Uh, basically this daco is uh, is denying uh, traffic into the internal network and then allowing everything else which would be to the internet for example obviously again on your environment might be different you might be more granular it's up to you but the the concept is that this DACL is going to be utilized when a domain user gets authenticated. And we're going to submit that. And last one, I'm going to do a domain computers. And we are going to do a, I have something here that I created. So this is an example of a, a DACL or a ACL that you want to create for a domain computer. If you are doing domain, if you're doing a machine authentication, you want to do something like this so that when nobody is logged in into the computer, the computer authenticates as a machine and it keeps some kind of traffic going on with the network. You don't want the, the computer to completely get off the network uh, depending on your organization, depending on your needs, right? But this is only an example. Uh, your uh, here is only allowing uh, DNS, DACP, ICMP, things like that, TFTP. Um, <clears throat> but obviously, if you have other devices that you need, like for example, you have a, a McAfee EPO, for example, uh, and you need those uh, computers to keep communication with the EPO because you have different things going on and you want to add a rule for that to permit that kind of traffic. In our case, I'm just going to permit IP any any. This is just, a, a, you know, an example. I'm just making it a, as generic as possible as for demonstrator demonstration purposes. But obviously you want to do what, you know, depending on your needs. All right, so once those DACOs are 
uh, create it, I'm gonna go to authorization profiles and I'm gonna create some profiles. So same thing, I'm gonna create one for domain admins and the profile is gonna say when a domain admin authenticates, I want you to download a DACO and it's gonna be domain admin DACO and submit. Same thing I'm gonna do with domain users. I'm gonna download a DACO and it's gonna be domain users DACO. And lastly, domain computers. I want you to download a DACO and it's gonna be the domain computers DACO. Submit and we have the three uh, authorization profiles that we're going to be utilizing on this demonstration and uh, once we have that we are pretty much all set to uh, actually no uh, we have still some things to do all right so when you go to the administration uh, tab and uh, there is very important to uh, add the certificate authority certificate into the trusted certificates for the eyes so if i go to the eyes certificates tab and i go to trusted certificates we can see that right now the eyes trust a bunch of stuff that comes with the eyes deployment but it doesn't trust our certificate authority that we uh, configured earlier today right so we need to fix that we need to add that certificate in here and remember when we were configuring the certificate authority and we configured certificate web enrollment and all that stuff that is because we need that now so if i go to my certificate authority and i do ip config all i can see that this is my ip address right or i could use the name doesn't matter right the name of the ca but let me refresh this so we still have the same certificates that we had earlier so if i go here and i do https and then the ip address and then i do cert srv it's gonna prompt me to uh, uh, authenticate with my credentials with my ad credentials and it's gonna take me to this page. This is the R certificate authority. Uh, it's just the D directory certificate services, right? So if I do download a CA certificate, I'm gonna do base 64 for this CA, which is RCA, and I'm gonna say download CA certificate. You can see that it just downloaded the certificate of this, the root certificate for the CA, right? So now that we have downloaded that if we go back to the ice under trusted certificates i'm gonna import a new one and i'm gonna add i'm gonna select that certificate that we just downloaded i'm gonna open it i'm gonna give it a friendly name and i'm gonna call it it's a domain right the ca for our domain and i'm gonna trust it for authentication within ice i'm gonna trust it for client authentication and syslog trust it for certificate based admin authentication and i'm gonna trust it for authentication of cisco services obviously it depends on what you need but it is very uh, basically this is very important for our needs and this is uh, very important right here for the dot one x client authentication we need to check mark that we're gonna submit and we can see that here it is now we now the 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 eyes trust that certificate authority right so now we need if we go to the certificate signing request uh, i'm sorry if we go to the system certificates we can see that this default self-signed server certificate is being utilized for admin and it's being utilized for EAP authentication. We don't want that because it's not a good idea to use the self-signed certificate 
for that kind of stuff. We want to utilize a certificate that is signed by our certificate authority to conduct it if authentication and conduct admin and we're also gonna utilize it to con you know for portal authentication which is gonna be we're gonna talk about that in a different video but how do we do that so we need to create a certificate signing request so we're gonna generate it we're gonna say for multi-use is fine you can be more granular if you want but we're gonna say multi-use and it's gonna be for this node the ic001 which is our ice we're gonna leave a uh, this as is and i'm gonna uh, uh, organization unit is gonna be on their computers let's see if i go here for example let's see if i go to computers i see that the ice is already there on their computer so i want the certificate to be under that uh, let's see other than that this we can leave it on blank obviously depending on your organization you can fill it up uh, very important for the sen subject alternative name we're gonna do dns and the dns has to match uh, obviously the dns name and it's a fully qualified domain name right so ice001 it's easy dot local then we're gonna add another dns name but we're gonna utilize the ip address of the ice server this is just utilized for doing a, a how do you call reverse lookup and a last one ip address and i'm gonna add the ip address of the ice which is the same thing the key type and all that stuff we're gonna leave it as is and we're gonna click generate all right once the certificate is generated i'm gonna click export and i'm gonna open it because we're gonna need it so once you open it i'm gonna leave it in there for now so if i go back to my certificate authority here on the web page i can do request a certificate and then advanced certificate request and here i'm gonna paste this so i'm gonna copy all and i'm gonna paste it there i'm gonna certificate template for web server and i'm gonna click submit i'm gonna use base 64 encoded and i'm gonna download that certificate all right so you see it's a new certificate uh, it's a number 22 that's because i have other ones that i downloaded uh, so i'm gonna go back in the ice i'm gonna go back to a certificate signing request and you can see that this is a certificate signing request that i just generated so I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna bind it. I'm gonna bind it to the one that we just downloaded from here. This is the one we just downloaded. So basically this um, this file that I just, this certificate, number 22, it has a certificate, it's, a, it's, it's an I certificate signed by the CA. So every time the ICE present that certificate to the endpoints, is gonna be signed by the CA, so the endpoints are gonna trust it because it's signed by the CA, right? So that's the that's the the point of it. That's that's what it, why we're doing this. And we're gonna give it a friendly name. I'm just gonna call it Ice uh, CA Binder, and I'm gonna use this uh, Ice certificate signed by the CA for admin. That's okay. I'm gonna use it for EAP authentication. This is just warning you that this usage is utilized by the self certificate, self signed certificate. But that's okay. We we wanna use it on with this certificate. And we're gonna use it for portal. This is for a different video, but I'm just gonna click it on there now. And I'm gonna submit. It's telling you basically that uh, you know it's switching to to the new. Uh, certificate and that the um, system is gonna restart uh, so once the system restart uh, we're gonna come back the ice is back up uh, I'm gonna go ahead and log back in but if you can see here uh, you can notice that 
this workstation, the one that I'm utilizing right now, it doesn't trust the um, certificate that was presented by the eyes, right? So, for example, when I have my workstation that I'm using right here uh, connected to the same switch, and when it goes to the eyes to uh, to go to the GUI, right? The eyes present the certificate to that uh, computer and my computer is not trusting it uh, even though we already uh, configured that like if I go to the certificates and I go to the it's easy CA bind <coughs> you can see that this certificate that is a uh, signed by the CA is being utilized for the admin which is this right there the GUI right so how come that my computer doesn't trust that uh, and the answer is because my computer the one that i'm utilizing for this demonstration is not joined to the domain uh, if i go to the workstation one which is the one that we're gonna be using for the demonstration this workstation is, i have it's, it's a small laptop that i have right next to me right now it's connected to the same switch and it's joined to the domain this, this uh, laptop is joined to the domain. So <clears throat> if I go to Google Chrome and I lo try to log in into the eyes, you can see that it doesn't, it, it does trust the certificate that is presented by the eyes. <clears throat> and that's what, that's a good sign. That's what you want to see. If I go here um, to the MMC console and I add the certificate for my user account and I got certificate for a computer account I can see that under current user I have a certificate uh, as issued by the CA and if I go to the computer I have and the computer also have a certificate issued by the CA and if we go to the CA the server and we refresh this you can see that the workstation one got a certificate which is this certificate right here. <clears throat> so that's that's how it works, right? So from from this uh, computer doesn't trust it because this computer is not joined to the domain, and this computer doesn't have a certificate. Uh, it doesn't trust that domain, right? Because it's not joined to it. Uh, so that's that's what it is. Uh, just wanted to put that out there. So now that we have all the certificates uh, configured, we have this policies and uh, results configured, all the DACOs and all that stuff. I think it is time, unless we miss something, I don't think, uh, to configure the policy sets. And this is the fun stuff. This is where you can get very granular, you can be very creative and uh, depending on your needs uh, it's gonna be different right it, it's, it's not always the same depending on your organization but for demonstration purposes i'm gonna go ahead and do this so i'm gonna create a new policy set i'm gonna call it 802.1x right and the conditions is gonna be if the location of the device equals bedroom right and remember the the switch we configure it to be on the bedroom location we are gonna hit this policy if this condition is met we're gonna hit this policy we can do different things we can do uh, instead we could do uh, if the let's see protocols if the protocol network access protocol equals radios it will hit that so if the if it's uh, you know uh, the network access type the, the protocol is radio it would it will hit this uh, policy we could also do a uh, wire 802.1x right put it on here which is a template that is already created but if i click on edit you can see that the if the normalized radius radius flow type equals 802.1x we want to use this this uh, um, right and this uh, policy set um let's leave it like that so every time there is a 802.1x authentication uh, coming up it's gonna hit this uh, policy set 
and for the allow protocols i'm gonna uti utilize the etls allow protocols that we configured earlier today in the in the video and we're gonna save that once we do that we're gonna go into the policy set and we are gonna uh, configure the authentication policy first so we're gonna create a new one i'm gonna call it 802.1x as well and i'm gonna add a, a condition so for the conditions again you can be creative it depends on your on your uh, needs it depends on your environment but the point is that whatever you put on the condition is what's gonna trigger that authentication policy so for example i want um, the way i'm gonna do it i'm gonna say uh, where is it protocol i believe it is yes so protocol if the protocol for network access and the e tunnel equals pip and the network access eap authentication equals eap tls i want to use the it's easy search which is the the um, external uh, you know external identity source that we configured earlier today so basically this is saying if for the authentication policy if it's a peep uh, if it's a tunnel peep and it's a the inner authentication method is eap tls then use the certs which is uh, the search that uh, we are giving to the voice station, we are giving to the users utilizing the certificate authority that we have uh, in place. Uh, so that's, that's gonna do that. Then on the authorization uh, policy, we're gonna create a new one. And we're gonna, the first one we're gonna do is domain computers. So for the domain computers, we're gonna say if the identity group is an external group under etc which is the domain equals domain computers we want to use the profile domain computers which is the profile that we created earlier today which under that profile is going to download the DACO for domain computers here on the conditions you can be more you can be more specific you can you can say something like um, protocol eap tunnel equals peep and protocol eap authentication equals eap tls and the group equals domain computers you can do something like this so it has to meet all the three all three conditions because at the end I could do or right you can do or but you know I'm just giving you some examples on of what you can do you can be very granular but the only reason I'm not doing all three is because on the authentication is already using the peep the network access peep and eptls so it's uh, that's the only reason I didn't do it that way but you know what let's let's leave it that way let's see what happens so I'm gonna copy duplicate this uh, above and I'm gonna name it domain users and I'm gonna change this to be instead of domain computers it's gonna be domain users and the profile for the result is gonna be domain users and I'm gonna duplicate it above one more time for the domain admins and same thing instead of being domain users here i'm gonna say domain admins and then the profile is gonna be for domain admins and remember this is uh, the eyes uh, evaluate these rules from top to bottom so you want to be as you know you the more specific rules you want them to be on the top right so keep that in mind uh, on this case it's not as 
uh, problematic if you don't do it that way if i put the domain computers on top it might give you some issues i'm not sure uh, but when you start building some very complex uh, authorization rules uh, and, and policy sets you want to keep that in mind you want to keep uh, the more specific uh, rules on the top so I'm gonna save this and once it's safe uh, we can see that we have all the things that we need if we go to the operations tab and radios live log I can see here that there is some authentication happening but I'm pretty sure this is all stuff or maybe not uh, but let's trigger something new so if we go to the workstation one let's uh, remote into it one thing that you need to make sure is happening that I forgot to mention is uh, to configure the the supplicant right the supplicant uh, if we go to our diagram we configure all this but we haven't configured the the supplicant yet right so let's do that right now so the first thing you need to make sure is that in order for the endpoint to conduct 802.1x authentication you need the wire auto config uh, enable right so let's enable that if you read the the description is going to tell you here that this is responsible for performing 802.1x authentication right so now is enable if we go to our to properties on our uh, NIC we have a you know a IP address and stuff once you enable the 802 the wider iron config this tab is gonna appear and this is the tab that you're gonna configure the 802.1x stuff right so I'm gonna go and uh, the first thing you want to do is obviously enable the 802.1x authentication for our case we are doing a peep right oh. and then if we go into the settings we want to make sure that we trust the uh, it's ECCA right and then we're gonna do smart car or other certificate for the inner authentication and we're gonna also trust the ECCA right if you were instead of using a uh, IPTLS for the inner uh, authentication method if you're doing MS chap 2 this is the place to change it but we're gonna use certificates so that's why I'm doing smart card or other certificate so I'm gonna click OK under additional uh, settings you can specify if you only want to do user or computer authentication one of the two or if you want to do both we're gonna leave it at both and we're gonna click OK all right we can see that it's uh, doing something there uh, let's see if we go back to the eyes we can see that the workstation one is over is there authenticated uh, and I believe it's because if you're doing remote if you're doing remote uh, desktop it's not gonna authenticate under the user so I'm gonna sign out out of here and I'm gonna do it manually I'm gonna grab the laptop in a minute and do it from there but for now you can see that the workstation right because we're doing machine authentication and user authentication we can see that the workstation one which is the workstation the name of the workstation was authenticated right and we can see that the ACL, the DACL for domain computers, was downloaded. And we can see more details here. Uh, authentication, uh, let's see. Let's expand this. The authentication policy was 802.1x, which is the one that we created and named it that way. The author authorization policy is domain computers, that's the one that it grabbed. The authentication profiles, domain computers. So, and this is the IP address of the computer. And this is the uh, device port, right? The, the interface that it's coming from. So it's looking good. So let's, uh, look, let's go to the switch. And a very useful uh, command that you can use for uh, troubleshooting 
uh, 802.1x is show authentication sessions and here it's gonna list all the sessions that are using 802.1x for authentication and we can see that authentication uh, authorization was successful uh, the domain is the data the method was .1x if we do the same thing but then we specify interface 3018 details and you don't need the details uh, work in this iOS but depending on the switch iOS you might have to say details after that but here there is more details into it right so it's coming from this interface this is the MAC address this is the uh, IP address of the endpoint the workstation name uh, right because it's doing a uh, machine authentication right now it was authorized uh, all that good stuff and here you can see that it downloaded the IP domain computers DACL, which is the one that we configured earlier today you can see that one X uh, it was successful and uh, the timeout time is this uh, and when it times out is gonna re-authenticate um, it's uh, you know it's doing what it's doing what I'm gonna do now is so you know so that you guys can see uh, I'm gonna log in to the laptop using my uh, credentials and we're gonna see how everything changes all right and you can see already the switch doing stuff because I'm I just uh, logged in into the laptop and there is some uh, things some messages here going on uh, very helpful but we can just do the same uh, command for show authentication sessions to that uh, for that interface and we can see now that some things change the username now is Burgos instead of uh, the the workstation right which is, was here up here we can see that uh, the domain i mean the DACO now is domain admins instead of a uh, domain computer so you remember if i do a show run interface f 018 you remember that this interface has already uh acl that i configure there for the authorization open that i configure so when the DACO is downloaded this acl replaced that so this one right now is not into effect this one is the ACL that is uh, into effect right now and if I go to the workstation one right <clears throat> I can see that if I go to command prompt I can ping uh, my domain and now if we go back to the um, ice we can see also that you know the Burgos uh, user was authenticated it was authorized uh, the author authorization policy was domain admins the profile was domain admins um, so we can see the behavior we can see the change of authorization is going from computer authentication to a user authentication uh, as needed right if i log out of my user right now i'm gonna do that real quick I'm gonna see in a minute that it's gonna authenticate the workstation and we see it right there it's gonna it authenticates the workstation downloads the domain computer DACL, so now the computer can keep a uh, uh, stay authenticated into the network and it can stay uh, in communication with all the devices depending on the DACL depending on what you configure on the ACL uh, this is a uh, very generic obviously you can be more specific depending on your needs on your environment uh, I hope that this uh, video was helpful if you guys have any questions on uh, the whole process if I miss something let me know put a comment on uh, below and i'll answer i'll try if you guys want to see some other videos uh, ice related let me know and on the comments and i'll be posting more videos uh, soon and thank you for watching